from blockbuilders.net and I want to show you guys how Bybit works today. And Bybit became quite popular during the last few months and the reason for it is basically that they have quite a good matching engine. So if the price of Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency that is traded on, Bin on Bybit is going up or down very quickly and you have the issue on other platforms like BitMEX that um, you can't place orders because um, the matching engine is not that good like it is on Bybit. So that's why a lot of traders move from BitMEX to Bybit in order to trade there. And I want to show you guys today how that works. If you don't have a Bybit account yet, you can use my link down below and sign up and open an account and you get um, a bonus of up to 90 US dollars. Okay, um, once you have an account, um, you can basically start immediately because you don't have a KYC process on the platform. So you don't need to upload a passport or an ID card in order to start trading. It's basically the same as BitMEX. So the first thing you can do is you can click here on my assets and then you need to deposit some cryptocurrencies in order to trade on Bybit. Um, depositing Bitcoin or Ethereum or any other cryptocurrency on Bybit is quite easy. All you have to do is basically you just have to click deposit and then you can see a Bitcoin address here where you can send your Bitcoins to. And usually um, they just need one confirmation. So you will receive um, the Bitcoins or the other cryptocurrencies very quickly in your account. It can take only 10 minutes or sometimes if the Bitcoin mempool is quite full and then can take several hours, but usually it's very quick. And it's basically the same for Ethereum or XRP or the other cryptocurrencies. So once you have some equity in your account like Bitcoin, you can basically start trading immediately. And as you can see here, you could also buy cryptocurrencies on Bybit. Um, it's via credit card, but you have to keep in mind that they charge you between three to four percent in order to buy Bitcoin, for example, on the and platform so it's quite expensive a better way to do it would be to use another platform like binance and buy some bitcoin there where you only pay like 0.1 percent on fees and if you do a wire transfer there you only pay one euro 50 and then you can actually buy bitcoin for less than 0.2 percent and so it's way better than paying here three to four percent so just wire some Bitcoin to buy it and it's all good and you save some serious money. Okay, the next thing we want to look at are the contracts that are traded on Bybit and there are basically two different contracts. There's a USD perpetual and an inverse perpetual. And the difference is basically that um, the underlying asset is either USDT, so with the USDT perpetual, the underlying assets you trade on would be USDT or with an inverse perpetual, it could be any of these cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum. And as the name already suggests, um, perpetual contracts have an infinite um, or they don't have an expiration date. So they run for an infinite amount of time. So they never expire. You just pay funding every few hours. And the question now is when should you use USDT perpetuals or when should you use inverse perpetuals? And it really comes down to you. Um, I would choose USDT perpetuals if I would think that Bitcoin will go to zero at one point because with the USDT perpetual, all I do is with good trades, I can get more USDT, more tether into my account with an inverse perpetual, I could, for example, increase my BTT, BTC stack in my account. And um, so if I think Bitcoin will go up in the long run, um, I would uh, trade inverse perpetuals. And we can do that now. Um, we are now on the trading dashboard and that's for inverse perpetuals. I mean, USDT perpetuals would basically look the same. So that's not much of a difference. 
and just the underlying asset um, is different. And then you can choose here um, if you want to trade Bitcoin, Ethereum, EOS or XRP. And you have to keep in mind you are buying future contracts. So you are not buying real Bitcoin, but future contracts that are connected to the price of Bitcoin. As you can see here, you can see the price and the chart currently is one hour is one candle. And you can also change that to, let's say, if one candle should be 30 minutes or you can do daily candles and so on. It gives you a good overview of the price development of Bitcoin or the other cryptocurrencies that you can trade on. Then you can see here your order book. You can see all the buy orders and all the sell orders. And then you can um, put your orders in here. You can do market orders, limit orders or conditional orders. And we will only look at market or limit orders. Conditional orders are more for more advanced people. But once you understood a market and limit orders, it's basically pretty easy to do a conditional order as well. So the easiest thing we could do is we could do a um, market order. So we will start with the market order. I will move to the side here. As you can see here, the contract details. Um, one contract is one USD and you have funding um, in eight hours. So in eight hours, if you are long, you have to pay 0.01%. If you are short, you are actually receiving 0.01%. And that can change depending if most traders are long or short. And you only pay funding if you are in a contract in that moment when the funding rate is um, charged. So if you are only go into a contract for a few hours, let's say less than eight hours now, and then you don't pay funding. Okay, um, if we want to open a trade, we can set a leverage here. And I would suggest not to go higher than a leverage of 5x. And you can also do cross. And that would basically mean it takes all the assets into your account as um, as an insurance and basically sets the leverage automatically. However, if a trade goes wrong, you can lose all your assets. You have to keep that in mind. So it's usually better to select a, a leverage on your own. And you could say, for example, okay, I want to use a leverage of 5x or maybe 3x and you want to invest like 4,000 USDT. And then you can say, and you can see here, okay, you could go long. You see my available balance here and the cost would be um, that if I would double the leverage here, you can say the cost would half because I doubled my leverage. However, I would be liquidated if the price, if I go long, drops by 10%. And if I go short, I would be liquidated if the price goes up by 10% with a leverage of 10x. So better use lower leverage in order to not get liquidated. And then you can just go long or short here. If you do a limit order, you can also set the price um, when the order should be executed. You can, for example, say, okay, if the price drops to 8,200 or 8,195, um, you want to go long. And then you click go. Uh, I'm wrong here with the okay okay now it works um, you can see here your order and it basically says if the price drops to um, 8195.5 uh, you will buy or you will invest 4000 USDT or buy 4,000 contracts worth one USD, and you have an estimated liquidation price of 7,484. And that's basically um, it. So you can confirm. And then you can see that your order is now um, here under open orders, and you could cancel it anytime. So the difference is with the limit order that you set a price when you want to enter a trade. And with the market order, the order would be executed immediately. So you would be in your position immediately. 
Um, that's basically all there is when it comes to trading on Bybit. It's basically the same for Ethereum or XRP, XRP contracts. So you can um, use these contracts um, the same way. If you have any questions about it, please use the comments down below. And if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you don't have an account on Bybit yet, um, don't forget to sign up and to get up to 90 US dollars in rewards for your new account. Thanks for watching.